Hi and welcome to our video on rigging. This is another one of two videos supplied on the uh, 3D World content CD uh, for myself as well as for Curve Studios. Um, we're going to be covering a, another technique for doing uh, joint compensation but using uh, corrective morphs. So real quickly what I want to do is take this little arm object here and let's go to setup draw child bones and let's just kind of draw in these bones here okay and once I've got those let me uh, select all the bones and just hit R to rest them I'm also going to hit P for bone properties and set the inverse distance the fall off to inverse distance greater than 128 so give us a tighter kind of a fit there. Okay, I'm going to set the frames here to 1. And I just want to go here, click. And I'm going to hit Y for rotate. And I'm just going to rotate the joint here like this. Okay. So say this, this will be about as far as I want to rotate this. Just for demonstration purposes, we can see what the joint's doing there. Okay, so we want to do is a little corrective work there in the joint. Now the way we can do this, we can actually create uh, endomorphs and layout, which is something that a lot of people don't know that can be done. And the way that we do this, first of all, is I, I could go right now and just go uh, click on this. Oh, and first thing I want to do before I do that is hit P for properties. Go to geometry and set the uh, subpatch subdivision order to the last and you can see again that we definitely with it set up this way we definitely need the compensation because of see how small it's getting in there we want definitely want to maintain the um, the volume of the joint okay well what I was saying before we can go in here and go in, uh, and then we're going to file save or export uh, excuse me file save endomorph and if we wanted to, we could save that as an as an endomorph, exactly what we see right there, that pose. Okay, but what we want to do to be able to create our our, our constructive, our corrective um, endomorph, because we really don't want to save this pose. We just want to save just the correction that we do for the joint compensation. I'm going to hit P for properties, and under dynamics what I want to do is go add soft effects double click go to operator and set it both of these to none okay that's all we got to do and so basically we're not even using soft effects other than to do this hit calculate and you see a little flash go to edit effects and edit tool and once we do that we can now go in here and see that pull these points around Okay, so to, just to make it easier for us, because right now we've got all these points that are kind of, kind of compressed in there, let's go into Modeler, and here's what I want to do. Let's zoom in here, and let's select these three points, because these are the points that, that we're really going to want to mess with a bit, and probably these as well. And I'm going to go create a weight map right here. And I'm going to call it bicep. And if you look under weight shade, see we can see the the weight map right there. Okay, let's leave it on weight shade for right now. Let's go create another weight map. Let's go to these center points here. Create a new weight map, and let's just call it center points. Okay, and let's go here. Let's create a new one called Forearm. Okay, so we've got those. Let's go back to Layout. Okay, so the nice thing is what we can do with the under the Edit Effects tool. Okay. Just for fun, let me hit Calculate again, and let's hit Edit Effects. 
now edit map every every possible way that we have in lightwave of tagging data to objects in other words uh, surfaces part names point selection sets UV maps weight maps all that stuff we can now select so this makes it easier for me to go in there and for example I have um, my edit size I have it set to soft selection I can turn that off or make it linear hard like none so at none if I go in there and just sort of try and see it moves the whole thing but I'm going to go set it to bicep weight map and see how they show up let's just move them all out here like this and then let's go to oh center point weight map we can kind of pull that out and then let's go to the forearm weight map see that now we've got a, a, a nice little joint compensation well because we also set up our edit frames to just all instead of after like using after or before or current it just does it for all all for all keyframes I'm gonna go back to zero and see how the the, the deformation stays the way it was okay so now what I can do because by going back to zero we've subtracted out the deformations from the bones but we've left the deformations from the soft effects so now I can just go in here and go file save endomorph and I'll say bicep corrective I'll just call it bicep corrective and just hit OK all right so now um, I can get rid of I can get rid of this in a couple ways I can just turn on soft turn off soft effects like that see if I put it back on it comes back on just turn it off just or I can just remove it whatever either way works okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to say create 30 frames of animation there select this bone let's just copy this to frame 30 and delete this one so now it's rotating out to frame 30 okay so now we want a way to be able to activate the uh, the endomorph now I'm going to use a variation of uh, one of the tools that I, I used in the other video which is cycler I mean excuse me cyclist but this one I'm going to use a channel based version of, of cyclist called cycler and so I'm going to select the object and I'm going to go into the graph editor okay and let's look for let's see our oh first of all to get a channel to show up in here so our endomorph we don't see it it's because we need to hit P for properties go to deform morph mixer double click and just click on this one which says bicep corrective bicep and then the channel shows up right in there in the graph editor okay so that's the one we want and we want it to tie it to the rotation of bone number three which is the the forearm bone there this one so here's what we do is we go to add select the channel that we want to control go to cycler under modifiers now it's important too is we need to determine okay what's the what's the cycle range okay and we'll go from nine degree you know we'll say nine degrees over to 95 degrees or we'll say 100 degrees it doesn't really matter that's the range and so we just double click and we go okay 
What are we? What are we going to? What's the cycle controller? That's bone one, two, three, and it's the the heading rotation. Okay, controller low value. Okay, zero controller high value. We'll say nine degrees, and we'll say high value is a hundred degrees. Okay, cycle start frame, cycle end frame. We'll just hit OK. Let me minimize that. Okay, now that we've got basically the range of the controller, the controller being this bone, we need to determine a cycle start and end frame, kind of like we did with cyclist. So we need to go in here, and let me just close that for a second. Let's add a keyframe on, say, frame 10 of this corrective endomorph, the bicep corrective morph. And let's just move it up to about 100%. Right about there. Okay, so that's going to be the cycle that we're, that we're going to be controlling with the bone there. One thing that would be nice too is I'm going to go in there and just select both these keys and go under uh, curves and under tension just give it an ease in and ease out. Okay so that's on frame 10 so we need to go back in here and say okay from 9 degrees to 100 degrees on that bone is going to control a cycle starting at 0 at frame and going to frame 10. So now you see, because we have that bone rotating, okay, from 0 to 30, okay, what we see here is the keyframed response that I created, but here is the controlled response. This is, this is the modified data right here we see as, the, as the kind of the light orange right there. That's what's, that's what's happening. So we see the same waveform here, the same motion, just stretched out over 30 frames. So now we have this corrective morph kicking in. So whatever, whatever period we use to cycle this over, that's what's going to show up. So let's say I, I change this to frame to, to 15. And let's just rotate this like so. See that? That's what's going to show up there. Let's let's hit. Uh, let's go back into the graph editor again. Let me just get rid of these channels here. Shift D, and let's look at the bicep corrective. Now see that? Here's the modified waveform going out to frame 15. So it's a simple way to control it. We can stack as many channels in here and we can use cycler to control all kinds of different morph channels off the one bone rotation channel so if we go down to let's go to bone three here's the rotation in the heading and we'll see if we can look at both at the same time okay so here's the keyframe rotation and there's the there's the, rota the response we're getting on the morph. So here we have a simple way of being able to control the response of, uh, of you know, endomorphs. And we can go in here, for example, on this one and make it as complicated as we want. So say, for example, I can go click here and change the response, the actual way that it, it kicks in like so. So let's watch this. See how the morph kind of does some interesting things right there where we added that little those keys? So we can make it look like, the, the, like there's a muscle sliding in there responding to the rotation of this right here. So that's the power of Cycler is that we can sculpt just like with Cyclists, we can sculpt our a keyframed response on that corrective morph and then just activate it by simply rotating a bone. 
So hopefully this has been uh, useful to you, and uh, we'll see you later.